With how strong some champions became during the preseason, it's to no one's surprise that quite a few are weak now. Hey, what's going on Summoners? My name is Nathan Ng, and today we'll be taking a look at the 10 of the weakest preseason champions. With all the new items and game changes, quite a few champions have risen to the top of everybody's tier list. That being said, some old favorites have quickly dropped in both win rate and play rate for the same reason. In this video, we're going to be covering what champions are doing poorly, why they're struggling, and how they fail in the meta. Let's not waste any more time and dive right into the video. Starting us off strong, or I guess weak, we've got Gnar in the top lane. While Gnar wasn't doing the best prior to the preseason, this adorable little Yordle was still playable. He was a great choice for anyone looking to play an aggressive top laner that could quite literally transform into a massive teamfighter. His overall win rate and play rate were a little bit weak, but he was still in a decent spot all things considered. However, with the introduction of the preseason, Gnar truly hit rock bottom. Most top laners are now able to abuse the new items, have high damage or high utility, and are fairly versatile with how they play. Gnar, on the other hand, can't take advantage of the new items, can deal with the tanks or the bruisers, and doesn't offer his team much. If Riot is ever looking to reintroduce him into the meta, they'll likely have to increase his damage and wave clear by a bit. Overall, if someone's looking for a champion that does similar things to Gnar, you're better off going somebody like Cassante instead. At least then you'll be able to stomp lane and provide your team with a lot of utility and tank power. Moving on to our next pick, we've got Malphite in the top lane. Malphite has been doing pretty good throughout the entire season. This giant rock offered a really strong counter to champions like Vayne, Fiora, Irelia, Volibear, and etc. His simple playstyle and strong laning phase made him just a must pick for anyone that was filled into the top lane. Plus, if the enemy ever went full AD, he could easily stack armor and become unkillable. As the preseason approached, however, Malphite couldn't keep up with the hyper tanks. They were all able to use the new items at near maximum efficiency while also embracing their high utility to help out their team. Malphite simply doesn't offer as much as a champion compared to somebody like Orn, Shen, or even Maokai. His wave clear is mediocre, his team fighting all relies on a single ultimate after which he's entirely useless. In terms of damage, he hurts but not as much as the other tanks do. Honestly, his only redeeming quality is that he's a lane bully, but with Hydra and Jack Show existing, it's just not worth going Malphite for that. Overall, if you want a hyper tank that can win lane, stomp team fights, and scale with your team, you'll find more success with Orn instead. Before we continue on to our weakest champion, we want to remind you all to check out ProGuides.com. With our new $7.99 monthly subscription, you can take your gameplay to the next level with some brand new course and bootcamp content. If courses and lessons aren't your thing, don't worry. We have challenger level coaches that are available 24-7 to help you out. As a member, you even get a 10% coaching discount. So, what are you waiting for? Go check us out at ProGuides.com and join the ProGuides family. Nonetheless, let's not waste any more time and dive right back into the video. Pulling us back into the video, we've got Talon in the jungle. Talon used to thrive in the jungle thanks to his incredibly fast clear and easy gank paths. He could constantly adjust his pathing to deal with invades, early ganks, etc. If he even got slightly ahead, Talon could easily 3 quad and take over the enemy jungle. Unfortunately, with the jungle changes, this isn't possible. When Riot reworked the jungle for the preseason, they essentially removed clear efficiency and made invading worth far less. Now that everyone can clear fast and you're discouraged to invade, Talon is having a hard time getting picked and, above all, winning. Per these sad jungle changes with the new tank and bruiser items and Talon just can't function. He'll likely see some play because he can feel fun, but other than that, it seems like his win rate will continue to plummet as time goes on. Overall, if you're looking for a jungler that really satisfies that similar Talon itch, check out Rek'Sai instead. She offers the same clear speed, good skirmish power, versatile build paths, and can gank from off angles just like Talon. On to our next champion, we've got Nidalee in the jungle. Similar to Talon, Nidalee was a great champion that played to punish the enemy jungler. She completely thrived on being able to dominate the enemy by stealing the jungle camps and setting up kills while occasionally clearing camps. With the jungler changes, Nidalee can't keep up with his playstyle without falling too far behind. Other junglers that offer much more utility can easily full clear and gank non-stop without falling behind. Nidalee had a high skill floor to begin with, but with these changes, sure, clearing camps is easier, but her mid-game is harder than ever. Plus, it doesn't help that Nidalee can't abuse many of the new items like the other champions can. At some point, maybe Riot will give her a few buffs to help her out a bit. Until then, we recommend picking somebody like Diana instead, so you can still skirmish, invade, and have a nicer clear while also being a powerful teamfighter. Bringing us into the mid lane, we've got Corky. After his nerfs, Corky went from a must pick in the mid lane to a fairly situational champion. He offers some of the best scaling in the game alongside a really safe laning phase. That being said, he's just not able to keep up with the meta mid laners at the moment. This is especially true with how powerful Syndra has become. In the preseason, it's all about having utility and wave clear priority in order to push the game in your team's favor. Unfortunately for Corky, he just gets outclassed and takes too long to scale up. Someone like Syndra, Victor, and Vex can clear waves with a short combo and quickly rotate to a fight. Once they're out of fight, they can provide their team with burst and CC. All Corky can do is show up and offer some decent DPS. 
until Riot gives Corky some slight buffs so he can fight for his place in the mid lane roster, he's going to stay behind everyone else. Honestly, if you're looking for a hyperscaling champion to carry the preseason, opt for Kassadin instead. He'll give you a better power curve as well as a reason to use the new items. Moving on to our next mid laner, we've got LeBlanc. LeBlanc has been suffering for quite a few patches now, due to the control mages taking over the mid lane, which honestly I'm okay with, because I do not like going against LeBlanc. Anyway, while she wasn't the best before the preseason, she was still a good pick that could pop off. Her amazing skirmish and poke during teamfights made her a must-have when it came to dealing with carries. The preseason seemed to have sealed LeBlanc's fate as a bottom tier mid laner, however. Unless you're faker on her, it's really not worth picking her up for the solo queue games. She requires significantly more skill for far less payoff compared to the other meta mids. Plus, she can't deal with tanker enemies as well, and lacks the utility to make up for it. All of our LeBlanc enjoyers can agree that she feels pretty bad right now, but with a slight push in the right direction, we're sure that she can make a comeback. Overall, LeBlanc isn't worth learning at the moment, but if you already play her, you should be fine sticking to her. Otherwise, you can pick up Vex instead and offer Wave Pryo, Skirmish Power, Team Fighting, and Burst. Now, before we move on, let's not forget about our favorite pro guys tradition. Today, we want to ask you all, if you can make one champion meta, who would it be? Personally, I know it'll never happen, but it would be cool to see Annie in the support role again. It really brings back old memories second her W in the base at level 1. Regardless of what your answer may be, let us know in the comment section down below what your favorite is and why. Anyway, let's dive right back into the video. Pulling us back into the video, we've got Aphelios ADC. Now, Aphelios has been struggling for quite a while now due to his insane difficulty and high scaling. At the highest level of play, he was still an excellent champion thanks to his versatility, lane presence, and overall safety. Pro players could pick him up in easily 1v9 challenger level games because of how strong he was. With the preseason introduced, Aphelios is a lot like me, just completely untouched. Sure, he's still a decent option when paired with somebody like Lulu, but he can't keep up with the other ADCs. Other marksmen like Varus, Caitlyn, or Kai'Sa are just able to pressure him in lane and help keep their team ahead. Aphelios currently lacks the tools to deal with the early pressure bot lane, and he's still not able to deal with the bruisers as easily either. Overall, if you're looking for a complex, hyperscaling ADC, it's probably a better idea to pick up Neela. At least then you can provide your team with some utility, high damage, and a great laning phase. Plus, you get free armor shred to deal with the tanks. Taking us into our next ADC pick, we've got Ezreal. Similar to Aphelios, the 1k LP Korean Challenger ADCs are able to dominate games with Ezreal thanks to their flawless mechanics and high game knowledge. Unfortunately, I can assure you that nearly all of us aren't able to play at that level, much less every single game. While Ezreal is able to use the new preseason items pretty well, he just doesn't have enough impact fast enough. Being able to go blue Ezreal with the new Frostfire is still really good and makes him unkillable, but by the time you get to that point, the game is usually too far gone to recover from. If the meta shifts and makes the early game a little bit less important, maybe Ezreal will rise to the top thanks to this build. Until then, we'd recommend playing somebody like Lucian or Samara instead, as they not only have a good early game, but they can also really spike hard in the mid game. Plus, you'll be able to enjoy a somewhat similar skill ceiling as you learn these champions. Before we continue on to the end of the video, climbing can be difficult and sometimes you'll need help or somebody to play with. If you want to join an amazing community of people like you that loves lists, talk pieces, and other things like this, check out our Discord using the link found in the description. So, what are you waiting for? Join us! Pulling us back into the video, we've got Alistar starting off our weakest supports. Alistar has always been a decent support thanks to his simple kit. He offers decent sustain with his heal, great versatility thanks to his engage and disengage potential, and is good at being a frontline tank with his ultimate. All of this is solid for his support and makes it quite sad that Alistar feels so weak at the moment. The bot lane meta favors enchanters and their ability to not only buff their teams, but also have a great bit of impact in the laning phase. Alistar may be able to engage on the enemy, but once he goes in, that's it. He doesn't offer the raw damage of an engaged champion like Nautilus or the short cooldowns of somebody like Leona. Once Alistar attempts to engage, an enchanter can brush him or his ADC off like nothing and then just force a fight afterwards. Ultimately, Alistar won't be able to thrive in the current meta unless it shifts back towards engaged champions. If you're looking for a similar playstyle with a big increase in skill, we'd recommend checking out Rel instead. Last but certainly not least, we've got Braum support. Braum is universally a loved champion thanks to his fairly balanced design. He offers a unique kit that borderline makes him an enchanter and tank put together. However, with that in mind, he is not a master at either one of them. Braum can be a decent frontline for his ADC and can displace the enemy to create space. He can also opt to be a decent peel, as he CCs and provides additional resistances to his team. Braum can even block key skill shots with his shield. Unfortunately, just like Alistar, Braum just lacks too much of an early presence to be useful and he often gets kited out so easily by the current bot lane duos. While he's still incredibly fun to play, he just can't match the meta. When Riot decides to buff him by slightly increasing his damage and lowering his cooldowns, he may have a good chance at rising to the top. Until then, we recommend sticking to somebody like Rakan or Tarek for that unique feeling playstyle. 
And that sums up our video for today. Don't forget to join our Pro Guys family at ProGuys.com. We offer exclusive giveaways and classes that you won't catch anywhere else. So stay tuned and don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. We'll see you guys back in the next video. But until next time, stay safe, stay healthy, and have a wonderful day. Peace.